Hi, I guess it's on. It's Maria, and this is my most provocative video so far. It's called Good Versus Evil. Let's talk about the light versus the dark, shall we? We've all heard of the light versus the dark, the good versus the evil, God versus Satan, yeah? The angels with white wings versus the fallen angels with black wings even heaven versus hell. Ooh, it's enough to spook us because how can we protect ourselves really against such diabolical entities? How can we make sense of such an out of this world phenomenon? The spiritual battle that is going on in dimensions unseen, is this for real or is this a metaphor? And why is life so damn difficult? Yet with all this darkness all around us, how can we possibly make it? I mean, we might just, we might as well just give up, right? And is it any wonder why so many are barely surviving, much less thriving? Well, here goes. Many in the spiritual community have heard and truly want to believe that it's all just love and light, you know? And to some extent it is. But what about the lying and the cheating and the bad people out there, the dark energy that casts black magic spells and strategizes to bring us to ruin, that spreads lies about us to keep us stuck and isolated and alone, that goes after our lover, our spouse, and that hurts our children and that steals our money. They just take it and hide it. What if I told you a secret? Remember when Jesus said to love our enemies? What if our enemies are actually in our lives not to make us victims of their wrath and their crap, but to motivate us to reach higher and to become better, to raise our vibe so high that nothing other than the frequency that we emit can touch us because remember karma the energy that we send out into the universe comes back to us so when you send out good karma good karma comes back and when you send out bad karma bad is what you get for sure and everything is energy so all that is in our world is that which is in alignment with us right when we have a high vibe we attract other high vibes. When we have a low vibe, <laughs> that's what we get. And we know what that's like, oh. And we are not here to live a low vibe existence, right? Yes, that I can assure you for sure. Yet as long as humans have inhabited this little planet of ours, oh, I just love this when I get to show this to you. I have a blue one too, but this is green. I like the green one too. Um, yeah, they're both good because they're both real. So as long as humans have inhabited this little planet of ours, we've lived lives where battles and wars and plagues and even pandemics have overtaken the consciousness of human beings. And certainly that fear has done a number on the quality of life here on planet Earth. Who doesn't think about global warming, nuclear disasters, pollution, economic collapse? It's enough to make you climb under the covers and not want to face reality, right? But what if I told you that it's all an illusion <laughs> and that one does not have to be part of that reality? It is, then you have to put your attention on it and so there it sits. So when you put your attention on something, you're gonna get more of it. It's going to amplify and magnify. So you want to not put your attention on it, right? And then it kind of dissipates into the ethers. So, um, so let's see, you put your attention on the good instead of the bad and the just and the positive, and then that becomes your reality. Yay, that's what we want. What if? I told you that dark energy exists to challenge us to become more than what we have ever settled for. 
what if <laughs> dark energy is the stimulus for change? Oh, that's an interesting one, right? What if dark energy propels us to get out of our comfort zone of complacency and to change our world for the better? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's like Halloween, where the children wear boogeyman masks to frighten people and go boo. But what if we say, hey, I know who you really are. And instead of spooking us, they laugh and the mask falls off for us to see the face that wants attention underneath it all. Those little narcissists, right? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've seen some miraculous benefits over the last couple of years in terms of how our world is changing and how people are working from home, how families in lockdown have become closer and more involved in one another's lives, how there are fewer distractions for people to avail themselves, how people are taking control of their health and making choices for themselves, how people are learning to think for themselves and express themselves. How the status quo is changing for the better. Sorry, I need some water. Thanks. <laughs> Here is something to think about. There is no escaping that which is not the light, the kind, the generous, the loving. Yet, if we are all made of love and love is all there is, then when we truly embrace this, there's nothing to be tormented by. Nothing, right? Because nothing else exists. It's only love. What if I told you that we are all a composite of light that is truly us and the dark that is merely unhealed parts of us and parts of others that are here to be healed? In ancient Chinese philosophy, remember the yin and the yang? It, that represents duality, opposites that are interconnected and interdependent. The yang is the male, the white. It is daytime energy and is positive, soft, and warm. The yin is the female, the black. It is night energy that is negative and hard and cold. That sounds kind of hard to imagine, doesn't it? Because we females are just so warm and loving and kind and fabulous, right? Well, anyway, um, that's not what the Chinese believe. But anyway, within each exists a bit of the other. So the dark part has a speck of white in it and the white part has a speck of the dark in it because we all have, as much as we want to be perfect and, and kind and generous and loving and, and compassionate and all the good things sometimes we our emotions do take control and we uh, there is a, a bit of the dark side in everyone we all have a shadow side that we're working on to um, to dispel um, and one cannot exist without the other and they can transform into the other and so nothing is all light or all dark and the unhealed parts of us show up as lying and cheating and stealing and betraying, as well as parts of us that take it. And this is key. The parts that are unhealed take it and allow ourselves to be subjugated, oppressed, depressed, sick, diseased, and in toxic relationships. Because if we were healed, oh, we would have gotten the hell out of there a long time ago. But it's the unhealed parts of us that keep us stuck. So we're all being called upon to wake up to take our power and to act like the divine beings that we truly are, right? There is no more sitting on the fence. What's the expression? Do what you need to do or get off the pot. <laughs> you know the one. You are here to stand up for yourself because as I revealed in my last couple of videos, if you do not stand up for yourself, who will? You think some magical character will suddenly appear and fight your battles and tell your truths? Well, what if your prince in shining armor, your prince in shining armor is still a frog? No kissing toads, yuck. Sorry, darlings, but hell <laughs> will freeze over before that happens. 
every one of you has a story of how you are faced with situations that are driving you absolutely bonkers. And when you really think about it, these situations are very similar to past situations in your life that you did not deal with. And we know that when you don't deal with an issue, it only gets worse until it brings you to your knees. So perhaps a situation in your childhood traumatized you so much. And because you didn't heal from it, as an adult, you developed a serious illness or you attracted narcissists or you did you know developed addictions whatever because whatever that was that is out of balance is a wake-up call your soul is screaming for you to pay attention to it so maybe you saw your mother abused and so subconsciously you chose an abuser too so not so now not only did you witness the abuse but you're experiencing it for yourself because issues are like cancer. When you don't confront them and deal with them, their trauma and their pain, you, but, and you choose to live in denial or pretend the issue doesn't exist, then it festers and ultimately implodes. I'll tell you in my life, as I've mentioned before, <laughs> when I came back from a trip to Brazil, my family had changed the locks to my Florida condo and forged the trust that now said I was written out and they cleaned out every penny, <laughs> not even a 20, but every single penny. And even my toothbrushes and my retainers and my tampons. <laughs> and, and so I became homeless. Well, let me tell you, I was so traumatized that not only did I not get 50% of my parents' estate, but my sister that I just never felt close to or trusted, talk about intuition, got 100% and then tried to block me from even surviving. Not one person would even talk to me. So given my belief that nothing happens without a reason, and there is a lesson to learn in everything that happens to us, I wasn't to take the people in my life with me. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, it was, I thought it was my loss, but maybe it was their loss more than mine. Anyway, who knows? But I thought, wow, oh my gosh, I'm to see what homeless people are like and what they need so that when I get my money, I can help them. Well, it's been eight years and part of that time, I lived in three different shelters and spent nine months living in a car because I kept thinking that God would make it all right. Well, God was saying, no, Maria, I'm not gonna make it right. You have to make it right. And so I had to step forward and stop the nonsense. And this was my opportunity to take charge of my life and to see what I was really made of. Just what was Maria going to do? Well, doesn't that sound like the drowning man praying to God, help me please God. So the man drowns and when he gets to heaven, he asks God, why God, why didn't you help me? And God tells him, what do you mean I didn't help you? Who in the world do you think sent you that airplane, that boat, and that helicopter? <laughs> yeah, right? And so, of course, my situation was a little more complicated, but I did go to a dozen different law firms to help me and they wouldn't touch my case. I went to the FBI, I wrote letters, even President Obama sent me a letter with a link to a job site. <laughs> oh, so let's just say, it wasn't time for justice quite yet. For me, the dark was just too dense and obviously the timing wasn't right. I mean, energetically on the planet. Sometimes um, we, we have to wait for the perfect opportunity and, and patience is a virtue for sure. And so, and I was to have certain experiences that my soul wanted for my growth. And I knew that nothing happens without a reason. So I had to keep trying and plugging away and keep learning, yet all the while knowing that at the right time, things would open up. Think about this. We are here to overcome. <laughs> Remember that song? We are the champions, yes. And to take our power. Well, the only way to do that is to be strong and to show courage, not fear, to tell the truth and put your foot down, right? Because remember, it's not about the other people in our lives, but rather it's about us learning, growing, and evolving. And at some point, we learn our lesson and we make changes to improve our life. 
And it's no accident that my family would behave this way to me, for they were on their life path, just as I was on mine. And truly, if it weren't them, it would have been others, because the opportunity for my growth was there. I had to learn to finally come into my power and to fight for what was mine and to, and to understand that uh, we are presented with challenges that we need for our soul growth. And so we're to go through those and figure out a way around them, right? And then to use the experience and the knowledge we've gained to help others, because that's why we're here. Right? We're here not to help ourselves as much as we are to help others, but we use the experiences that we have gone through in order to help others, right? So, um, and, and for those people who have become adversaries or the dark influences in our life, you can be sure that their, um, their path was more difficult than ours because karma is nothing I ever want to experience to be sure because karma never forgets people and never loses an address, truly. Karma is balancing energy. You reap what you sow for every action. There must be an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law. Truly, without it, we could not become our best selves. So here's, here's the bottom line. Fear not, regret not, hate not, pity not, anger not, revenge not. But instead, thank God for all those who came here to try to squash us and smoosh us and smack us like with a fly swatter because they succeed only if we give up and give in. And once we realize that life on earth is all a game, a strategic chess game, a game of life, and we are here to make the right moves and to overcome as we perfect ourselves. We embrace all those who dim our light, but instead, we only get brighter and lovelier. Yes. So my beautiful people, shine bright. And in the words of Winston Churchill, never, 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 ever, ever, ever give up. So until next time, I love you. Bye.